Welcome back to another playthrough series. This time I'm going to be doing Battalore Second Edition. It's a two-player game, head-to-head uh, -head tactical combat based on the commands and colors system, which uh, most people might be familiar with, with Memoir 44. Basically, we have the red versus the blue. We have the demonish team versus the humanoid kind of team, and I apologize, I forget the exact terminology for them. However, it's a pretty good... Uh, tactical game and uh, there was an original version of battle lore this of course is the second edition which has just come out i think within the last year so anyway basically this is the rule book i'll be going over rules very briefly uh, and of course these are the uh, main units uh, the, the master the big monster units uh, one for the Demon Team, very, very nice miniatures. Of course, Fantasy Flight Games, producing the game. And, of course, the big Eagle Rider as well. So, um, the board is split into three sections. You have a left, a center, and a right section uh, with red uh, uh, crossed lines going through them. And this will become apparent when we look at a couple of the cards, the command cards. So what I'm going to do is, um, and of course there's no terrain laying out here at all either. There are things like, you know, forests and there are hills and rivers and cities and things. And this will all make sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do a random setup. So let me, um, I will pick, I guess, the demon team first and we will pick the team and the scenario. There's seven of each that we'll be playing through and then I'll get the board set up, explain a bit of the rules, pick the cards for the two different teams and then next video will be into turn one. So let me just get out set up here for a second. Okay, so to briefly, I'm just gonna go over a little bit of the, uh, this is the quick reference guide and this is a really handy um, reference book that comes with the game. It's not the rule book, but it has all the frequently asked questions and it's, it's very good. Uh, and on the back of it is a quick reference. And it basically runs down the game phases from uh, main phase to upkeep phase. It explains to you what each of the dice symbols means on the uh, unique dice and it goes through the different terrains and abilities. And I'm not going to go through all of this right here, but it's a very good uh, little reference sheet for you uh, when you're getting ready to play the game. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm just going to randomly, there are three for the red team, three for the blue uh, that come with the game and they're just, they're pre-made pre armies. You can build your own army of, our own army of 50 points or you can just choose one. I'm just going to randomly choose one and so this will be what we are going to use. A brutal assault for the Uthuk army. Uh, we're going to get three Blood Harvesters, three Flesh Ripper Brutes, two Obscenes, and the Chaos Lord. So that's going to be our team for the Uthuk, the Red Army. And then I will just randomly draw one of the three for the Blue Army. And we'll just pick this one, Guardians of Lore for the Dakon Army. So we're going to get four Citadel Guards, three Omens, uh, two Ruin Golems, the Rock Warrior, and two lore. So if your points don't total 50, whatever's left over uh, is done in lore. And of course, lore becomes important because there are lore cards. So that's going to be the two teams. Uh, we can quickly look at the Uthuk units. So with the Blood Harvesters, they have a special rage ability and a uh, frenzy. And if we look at the stats on the bottom of each card, it's relatively the same. Uh, different numbers, of course, same layout. So two for movement. Uh, three health, which means they have three units in the group, and, uh, or sorry, three damage. They do three dice to roll for damage, I'm sorry, and three health is the green, is how many units in the grouping. So we have the Viper Legion. They have a special ability, uh, Viper's Bite, when they roll. So they have a movement of two, they roll two dice, a range of one to four on this one. They have three health, the Flesh Ripper Brutes can move three spaces, they have blood, thir blood Thirst and Pursue 2. We'll get into these rules as we play. Three attack dice when they attack, they're melee units because of the fist, I should have mentioned that. And three health, there'll be three in that grouping as well. The Obscenes have Craving and Ferocity special abilities. They only move one, but uh, that's mitigated up here. And they have four dice for attack, they're melee and 
three health, and of course we have the Chaos Lord, which is the big model I saw at the beginning here. Six health, and the little drop here means that it's just going to be a single unit that can take six wounds before it's uh, killed. Uh, it does four dice for attacking and one movement. So that's the Uthic uh, teams. And over here for the um, Daquan, we have the Citadel Guards. And again, similar stats. They have something called Superior Tactics and Pursue 1. They can move 2. They have 3 attack dice, 3 health. We have the Yeoman Archers, which have a double shot ability. 2 movement, 2 attack dice. You can see here ranged 1 to 4. And they have 3 in the grouping. We have River Watch Riders, which have Vigilant and Flanking. They move 4. They're on horseback, of course. Melee attack, 2 dice and three units in, in their grouping. Ruin Golems, two movement, three attack dice melee, and three health. They're immovable one and stunning blow. It's their special abilities. And the Rock Warrior, which will not be part of this game because I didn't draw that card, uh, but it has mobility to flying. And again, it has a four health. Um, the blood drop symbol means it's just a single unit and it will take that many wounds to be knocked out. Four melee attack dice and a movement of three. All right, so that's the Uthic and Dokkan armies. And now I will set up again here and we will randomly pick the initial setup. Okay, so I misspoke a little bit. We will indeed have the Rock Warrior participating in the battle. Uh, it was on the card that I did for the initial draw for setup. Okay, so how we set up the battlefield itself is there are seven cards for the Uthic here and seven for the Dokkan. And we just basically pick one of them and we are going to use that one. And this is called Blood in the Water. So this shows you how the Uthic are going to set up their half of the board. You can see the terrain hexes here, uh, the victory point markers, the rivers, and the shaded red areas are where the Uthic uh, units can set up. Uh, and with this one, uh, the gist of it is the cavalry units, which are the Viper, um, the Flesh Ripper Brutes are the cavalry for the Uthic. They can move into and begin in water spaces. Uh, so they're not stopped by water hexes. So that's going to be their special ability for their half of the board, or for basically the entire uh, playing of the game, because they're playing with blood in the water. Uh, and it says when an army, when an enemy unit occupying a water hex or hex adjacent to a water hex is eliminated, they gain one victory point. So that's going to be the Uthic setup. And if we look at the Daquan, they have also seven uh, different setups. Now we'll just grab one of those randomly. And we're going to have the Blind Muir Forest. And you can see the light blue is where uh, the Daquan units can set up initially at the beginning of the game. And we have victory point markers on the map. We have some mountains here and a city and a couple of forests. And we'll be setting it up. And this one says, during your order step, you may order units in forest hexes as if they were in any section. So there are two forests on this side of the board, obviously forests on the Uthic side of the board, and victory point gain one victory point if friendly units occupy more hexes in the center section than enemy units. So if we cluster units into the enemy section uh, more than the enemy, we can gain a victory point. So that's how we're going to set up for the Daquan. So basically now what I will do is I will set up the board uh, with the terrain and with all the water hexes, you can see what that looks like. And I'll explain a little bit about how the actual uh, playing pieces, the units themselves, get placed onto the board. Okay, so I've got all the terrain laid out now. This is the Uthic side, the Daquan side on the other uh, half of the board. Um, and as you can see, you sort of um, do half of the middle row and then all the bottom uh, depending on which army you are using. And there are victory point markers out here, according to the maps. So this is with all of the terrain laid out. So what I'm going to do next, and what you're supposed to do, there, there are mini cards uh, that you would lay face down. So if you're playing with two people, of course, you're laying down your army uh, on all of the red shaded areas here for the Uthic. Uh, placing mini cards for which your of your units you want to play. So with this uh, Brutal Assault Army we're going to be using, we'd be placing down, you know, three Blood Harvesters, three Flesh Ripper Brutes, that type of thing, and mini cards. But since I'm doing all the setup for both sides, it's not really worth placing down all the mini cards and then having them all flipped and revealed. But that's the mechanic to do it 
in the game. So I'm just going to go right ahead and set up uh, the miniatures in the, you know, places that would make sense for either side to set up and then we'll come back and I'll show you that. And then we'll get into drawing the lore cards and the command cards and then once that's all taken care of we'll be next video into turn one. So let me just get all the miniatures on the board here in a second and we'll have a look at that. Okay so both armies now are placed out on the board uh, and also each side gets to place a Ford token. So I had the Uthic place one Ford token here and I had the Daquan place their Ford token here. Uh, and movement ends when you enter a Ford but you can cross a river. However the cavalry units for the Uthic in this game will be able to move into and through water units without impediment. Okay, so now we're getting to the drawing of the cards. So each uh, faction gets to draw six command cards and three lore cards. The lore cards are faction specific. The command cards are a group card for all. And then they will discard to the bottom of the deck two of the command cards and one of the lore cards. So let's have a look at the Uthic command cards that we drew. I just drew six of them. Uh, we have attack left, which means order three units in the left flank, which of course would be the left side of the red. And if a unit occupies both, like this with a line running through it, they can be either in the left or center. So that's one. Uh, we have patrol left, which is two units on the left side. Attack right, three units on the right. Line advance, three, one from each uh, area. Uh, onslaught is order three infantry units. After your move step, each ordered infantry, infantry unit may move a hex and attack left for three. So I need to get rid of two of these and I think I'm going to get rid of these two. Uh, that leaves me a little more options. So that's the command cards that we're going to keep for the Uthic. The other ones go to the bottom of the deck. And for their lore cards, they must get rid of one of them. So we have Chaos of Battle. This costs 8 lore to play. And it's play after your opponent's command step. Uh, not sure if we're going to keep that one. 2 is Overwhelming Power and Fury of Yulan. I think I'm going to discard the Fury of Yulan and keep these two. So we'll just go over them quickly. This one, Chaos of Battle. Uh, play after your opponent's command step. Take your opponent's played command card into your hand. Then give your opponent a command card from your hand that your opponent must play instead. So you can pull a fast one on your opponent by playing this card. You deny them the card, the command card they want to play and you give them the one you want them to play. And this one is Overwhelming Power. Again, art very nice. Play after an enemy unit is eliminated while on your opponent's half of the game board, gain one victory. So if you have uh, the enemies moving onto your half of the game board, you get rid of them, play this lore card, you get a victory point. So that's the lore cards we're gonna keep for the Uthic. And now let's have a look. The other one goes to the bottom of the lore deck. Now the six cards for the Citadel. Uh, Desperate Ploy. Order two units. Each single sword result produced by friendly weak units may be committed to cause one damage. And I'll explain weak units and such as we play the game. They have three attack center. One in each section. A one, two, and one. Darken the skies. Or, or three archer units. During your attack step, each ordered archer unit then that did not move during your move step may perform an additional attack. Now, this is really deadly for the Daquan because if their uh, infant or archer units don't move, they also they already get two attacks. This would allow them to have three. Uh, and this is a battle march, order three units that are not weak. So, I may have to uh, take a little think here. I think I'm going to get rid of Desperate Ploy and uh, line advantage. So I'm going to put these two back on the bottom of the command deck. So that's away with that. And now again, three lower cards and we must discard two of them. So crushing blow during your order step, wall of steel, enchanted arrows. Um, I think we're going to keep enchanted arrows and we will keep crushing blow. I'll put Wall of Steel back underneath their faction specific lore deck and let's take a look at this. So crushing blow of course has having to do with the Ruin Golems. Order one Ruin Golem unit 
in addition to the orders provided by your command card. Add three dice to each of the rune golems combat rolls this turn. That is massively nasty. So that's a good one to keep. And enchanted arrows. Play after your move step. During the turn, friendly archer units have double the maximum range for their attacks and ignore units and blocking terrain when determining line of sight. In addition, damage caused by their combat rolls cannot be ignored. Wow, another very powerful and nasty special lore card. All right, so we have command cards, we have lore cards. And because of the initial setup for the Daquan, they also start with two lore tokens. Um, and I forgot to mention, who begins the game? Well, in this case, it is going to be the Uthic player, because in the bottom left corner here, you can see there is an A1. So an A as the Uthic setup, and a C2 is the Daquan setup, and of course, A comes before C in the alphabet. So the Uthic will be going first. And how the game will play out is it will alternate turns, um, and the first player that gets to 16 points will win the game. However, uh, because the Uthic are going first, if the Uthic gets 16 points, the Daquan will get one more turn to try to match or exceed the 16 point total to win the game. Of course, if the Daquan gets 16 points before the Uthic, they will automatically win the game because to make the game uh, fair and even, each uh, faction gets an equal number of turns, and it will play to 16 points. Okay, that's the setup, that's the cards, that's the armies out on the board. Um, join me next time when we're going to actually start off with the Uthic player uh, taking their turn, because they're going to be first player, uh, and it'll be turn one. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Join me next time for Turn 1, the Uthic player.